I think about Southwest National Parks, I think about open, vast landscapes and pristine wilderness. Located in the beautiful town of Aspen, Colorado, a nonprofit organization called EcoFlight can be seen working hard on the conservation of America's beautiful landscapes. Because EcoFlight's mission is to educate and to advocate, and we feel strongly that when we teach people, we, we educate them, we want them to advocate for their position. So we, what this has evolved in now is a small program at the end of our busy flying season where we get students together and we take them to different issues and we hopefully they educate them and inspire them to be future leaders for conservation, for the environment, to speak out, have their voices heard. We provide them with lots of material, we have speakers, and most of all, we give them the unique aerial perspective. In October of 2011, EcoFlight invited four college students to join them on the coveted Flight Across America trip. Well, our focus is different this year. We're focusing on national parks, which is something I've wanted to do for many years. It's such an iconic part of what makes America great. Myself, Ben Saheb, and Jenna Wirtz from Colorado Mountain College, along with Xavier Rojas and Ashley Basta from CU Boulder, were the students who joined them last October. With national parks being the theme this year, the four of us students were flown to the Four Corners region to study the environmental impacts on the southwestern national parks caused by the energy industry of America. into the plane, it's pretty magical. Um, just seeing the land from an aerial perspective really hits home. This trip, it has been one of the best learning experiences of my life. You know, it's, it's the best way to learn when you learn it straight from the source. As an aspiring filmmaker and student in sustainability studies from Colorado Mountain College, Going on this trip inspired me to make this film. We studied many different issues in the Southwest, everything from coal power, uranium and potash mining, to oil and natural gas exploration. Y'all can kind of see like the spider web of all the natural gas wells with the roads and there's a drill rig down here to um, our right. Uh, if you all look over to our left, uh, you see the the smokestacks, those are the San Juan Generator Station to the north and the Four Corners Power Plant to the south. And uh, it's an inversion in there. We get a brown, brown cloud almost every day. And uh, it's sort of a, a big issue. So devastating what it's evidence of. Um, 
because because the the two coal plants that we went and saw are on Navajo land, um, it's like evidence of one of the most detrimental acts of environmental injustice I think that we've ever seen. I was talking about. as a child to not really know that I grew up and just to, to, to see all of that now it's just it seems to be getting worse. And it, it, it really is, it, it hits home and it hits my heart, you know, that uh, my people are being affected by that. So, sorry. <laughs> National Park that's most uh, affected by the air quality coming from the two coal-fired power plants. And if you look back behind you, to the left, you can see the two coal-fired power plants. They're not really that far away at all. You know, it's one thing to be told the burning of coal is bad and the mining of coal is bad, but when you actually are sitting in front of somebody that lives in the area, somebody who is affected by these problems and whose people are affected by it and who's literally spilling his heart out to you, you know that the energy that's being produced there is, is hurting somebody. Yeah. I was really struck particularly by the uranium mining claims that are surrounding the Grand Canyon. There's something like 10,000 claims. So this is quite a mining operation right here. There's a number of uranium claims up along, along in that area for especially the Havasupai village that's living at the base of them. This is a serious threat to water contamination. It's, it's um, highly plausible that if those claims were to actually go into effect and uranium were to be mined, then that the water could be contaminated with radioactive byproduct. Um, one of those uranium plants was five miles from the edge of the Grand Canyon. I mean, that's way too close. It really is. So a lot of the communities that uh, live right underneath these facilities, um, they don't have power, haven't had power. Um, and, you know, when it comes to environmental justice, social justice, this is ground zero. It's hard to comprehend how um, careless we can be. We're burning fossil fuels. 24 hours a day and uh, feeding the uh, big cities of Phoenix, Tucson, uh, California. I mean, it's kind of crazy. It really hit home with me. I was able to take what I learned and it stuck and it's going to stick with me forever, you know? Because I saw it, I was there, I experienced it, and you can't beat experiential learning. So this landscape that we're flying over right now is uh, part of what we call the Greater Canyonlands region. And these areas, uh, you know, currently don't enjoy very much protection. Well, it's really interesting because when you think National Park, you you um, you know that the, the parks themselves are protected by the boundaries, so we're not allowed to do drilling or to do resource extraction actually within the national parks, but um, the way that they're impacted by the energy industry surrounding it is, is due to the fact that national parks are not isolated. They're very much connected to the surrounding landscape. And then directly ahead of us, we're seeing the, uh, you'll see the big blue pools of the Ponash plant. That's been here since the 1960s. It really enriches life out here. People live to come out here and play in these outdoors. And if these resource extraction sites are degrading that, then we really don't have much in the West. You start to develop an understanding for it, you know, like why these national parks um, are worth so much. EcoFlight's flight across America radically changed my perspective on how the energy industry in America truly operates. I learned how the people behind these industries have little sympathy for the native tribes and America's beautiful landscapes. I saw with my own eyes how these industries burrow up to the edge of our beloved national parks and how they continue to threaten them today. 
It is evident that the energy production in our country is necessary for our culture to thrive, but I also believe we are in the midst of a momentous cultural paradigm shift. I believe if we put our minds to it, we humans have the knowledge and the power to redesign this destructive energy industry and transform it into a more clean and productive one. My name is Ben Saheb, and I believe a sustainable future is at the forefront. We just have to go get it. And if anyone's watching, I hope they take this in and feel empowered to kind of do the same thing because this is an issue that's happening right now and we need to take action as a generation.